Hello there guys, welcome to Yo Sakura. This video is basically a crash course through Adobe Illustrator. It's going to show you most of the options and tools which you need to know to get started with working with an Illustrator. The reason I've created this video is so that it is a primer for the other course which I wanted to do which is how exactly I went about creating the Yo Sakura logo within Illustrator itself. So. In this video, I'm going to talk about the different ways in which you can create objects, manipulate objects, grouping, clipping, isolating objects, effects, units, and all sorts of things with an Illustrator. So I really hope you find this video useful. So let's get started. So here I'm in Illustrator. This is the default uh, screen in Illustrator as soon as you open it up for the first time. I have no canvas or no new document open within it. So if your Illustrator does not look exactly like this, uh, if you want to follow along exactly, you can go ahead to the top right corner here and here in the drop down list, set it to Essentials. So the interface should look like this. If it still does not, go down and tell Reset Essentials. It basically goes ahead and resets the entire interface so that it looks exactly the way my interface does right now. So now, once you have that set up, let's go ahead and create a new document where we get started. Now, to create a new document, you can directly go ahead to File and tell New or Default, the shortcut is Control yan I'm not going to touch any of these options here. We are going to come back to Canvas Settings, Unit Setups and everything by the end of the video. So now, here we have the default canvas, uh, new document open with an Illustrator. We have the name for the document and now let's get started. First thing people want to know, how exactly do you create objects? Well, if you want to create objects, well, first thing you have to remember is that all object creation tools are in the second panel here in the toolbox. So if you want to create objects, this is where you have to go. Now I'm going to go ahead and start creating default objects. So default objects are basically what I call the circle or rectangle and things as such. So let me go ahead and open up this dialog box, uh, this pop-up from inside this. And by clicking on this side uh, you know, pull away panel, I can bring out this entire box. So as you can see, I have different options. I can create rectangles, I can create rounded rectangles, ellipses, polygons, stars, and whatnot. So now I'll go ahead and first show you the different uh, options you have while creating these objects. Uh, now I have the rectangle tool, and if I go ahead and directly click and drag, you can see I create two different corner points. So the first click created the top left corner, and the bottom click, uh, the last click created the bottom right. It could be any way. I can just click and drag it in any direction, and it goes in that particular direction. So you can go ahead and create rectangles the same way. But Illustrator has any package gives you loads of shortcuts and options. So let's see a couple of those. I'm just going to go ahead and undo the uh, creation of this. That's basically Control Z, undo. I'm going to undo both of the operations. And now, when I'm going to click and drag this rectangle, I'm going to press and hold Shift key. And as you can see, when I'm dragging this, the width and height indicator right next to my cursor is showing me the exact same values. I'm not able to change the shape of this rectangle from a square. So basically, holding Shift constrains the width and height and gives me a particular perfect square. So this is the help, uh, this is what the shift key does. If you are instead going to use the alt key, you can see immediately there is a huge change. Alt key basically goes ahead and tells wherever you clicked the first, um, where you um, made the first click, that's where the center of the object is going to be. So let's say I wanted the center of the object to be in the center of the canvas. While I move my mouse, you can see there is a green text which tells center and there is an X mark in the center. I'll go ahead and click and drag. By default, it creates one corner point in that particular center, but instead holding Alt puts that as the center of my object itself. Now using multiple shortcuts like shift at the same time you can see that I can create a sh uh, complete square starting from that center. So these are the two shortcuts which are quite useful while creating this. Similarly if I go to the sphere it follows the same shortcuts. Clicking and dragging follows the bounding objects or the bounding box of the sphere. Holding the shift key makes sure it's a perfect sphere. Holding the alt key sends the sphere to the center point or the first click as a center point. Holding both of them together creates a sphere with the first click as the center point. So these are the basic default options so let me go ahead and delete these objects 
now similarly if you are going to create any of the other options you can go ahead and while creating press the arrow keys up and down arrow keys to change the number of sides like on this polygon tool I'm using the up and down arrows on my keyboard to create different sides so you can easily go ahead and change these options you can use shift to constrain the exact size or the angle in this case and alt to change the exact position so uh, actually alt uh, is, does not seem to work with this because it is being created from the center so that is for the polygon and similarly for the star I can go ahead and create that I can go ahead and use my arrow keys on the keyboard to change the values for that come to the rounded rectangle I can do the same I can use the up and down arrow keys to change the roundness of my rounded rectangle so like this I can go ahead and create different of one of these tools and obviously I have this flare uh, I have no clue how many people actually make use of this flare because I personally have never actually made use of it in any of my projects so this is basically creating different objects now we created these objects but as you can see these basically are empty these are blank and as you can see the fill and the outline for these are basically blank white and black so this is the color combo which you have for the objects itself so if I want to change the color of any particular object like let's say this object which I have selected I can go ahead and click on the fill which is the object you know, which is the uh, color swatch which is completely colored or I can go to the outline which is the one which only shows you the outer boundary and not the insides and give the particular color so let me go to the uh, fill and double click it gives me the color dialog box and I can choose any color I want and hit OK and this basically gives me the fill color and now I can go to the outline and tell what color I want for the outline now because the object is so small or I have zoomed out so much I can't really see the outline color so let me give a very contrasting color so that when I zoom in you can see the actual color itself so as you can see the outline and fill colors have been applied to the object so this is one of the easiest ways to apply outline and fill colors apart from that you can also go ahead and tell you want to shift the outline and fill color basically swapping the different colors so now as you can see the colors are swapped you can do this any number of times you want obviously apart from this you can see that there's a small swatch here which is basically the black and white colors which were default if you have selected an object and click on this you basically get the default white fill with a black stroke outline now let us say you do not actually want an outline on an object so what do you do in such a case you can go ahead and make sure the outline is the active swatch which means outline should be on top of the fill you can see that I can shift outline and stroke or fill using by just clicking on them now once the stroke is active I can click none and by doing that you can see the stroke is gone the fill actually exists and to see that I can put this object on top of another one so I'll just take this and give it a different color so you can see what's happening so you can see this object which has white fill is blocking the other object so it does have fill now let's say instead I only wanted the outline but no fill so in such a case I'll come to the outline I'll give it a particular color so let's say I give it a black color and now to the fill I tell none so you can see I told it has only the outline but no fill this time similarly you can go ahead and give a gradient instead of a fill so now you have a gradient option you can go ahead and choose the different gradient options you want you can tell you want a gradial or linear gradient if you want other options for this tool you can go ahead and choose a gradient tool over here and change the angle and all such details for this tool so I'm not going to go too deep into this tool as you can see it's quite self-explanatory you can go ahead and try to figure it out for yourself now once this is done let me say that I really want to choose different colors I want a big swatch as you can see there's a huge color swatch over here I can go ahead and pick any color I want and it get basically gets filled I can shift it over to the outline and now fill in any color and it fills the same color to the outline as you can see by changing it here I can easily change the colors there now uh, the way you can shift between these is using a simple shortcut which is X on the keyboard and it changes you from fill to outline so when you're working directly in Illustrator you don't have to come here and keep switching between the outline or fill options when you're picking colors so that was creating objects and adding fill and stroke to the object itself Now, if you want to change any of the options like let's say you want to give particular colors and you want swatches for that you have all those options here on the top bar if you want to change the size of the stroke too you have all such options you have different uh, things you can just go through here on the top and you'll see all of them 
now that was basically creating objects now let's me just show you one other option which is basically the opacity when I'm going to show you how I created the logo I'll show you how I make use of opacity majority of the times to see exactly how I want to place different objects so by giving different opacities you basically make an object transparent so uh, as you can see this white object is basically sitting on top of the transparent object so I'm not able to see this exactly so I'll show you one method in which I can bring objects back and forth basically I'm changing different layers or ordering of objects and this layering or ordering can be done in the layer palette which you can see is over here on the side I'll just go ahead and toggle all of my panels on the side to be open so you can see all these options I just want to show you the layers options for now now if I tog toggle open the layers option you can see I have path and another path you can see if one is the blank one and another is the default green and purple okay it's kind of hard to see so let me just go ahead to the panel options I'll just tell I want it to be large so you can uh, see a little bit more about what's happening now actually let me go ahead and tell I want it to be really large okay maybe a little bit more so as you can see you can make use of all the options which you have within illustrator to see exactly what's going on so now this is the layer uh, think of layers as different files in which you can put in different sheets of paper so in this what it's telling me is that this green and pink paper which I have or this image which I have is at the bottom of the white paper because of which the white paper is obviously covering this one so instead what I can do is just select this object and drag and drop it on top of it so as you can see now immediately I have this green object which is basically sitting on top of this white object let me go ahead and apply a different color on this white object so you can see what's happening as you can see this object is transparent and it's covering this object on top now as you can see this transparent object is covering this on top but if you are familiar with uh, software like Photoshop you know that this is not the only way of blending two objects together yeah, in Photoshop you have something called blend modes you can multiply screen and use all such blend modes on objects if you want to do the same in Illustrator you can come down to the transparency tab transparency tab and here you can change the blend mode to anything you want so let's say I want to darken it as you can see the blend mode is changed it's darkened you can multiply it you can go ahead screen it or do any one of the options here till you get the result that you are looking for now let's say I didn't want the opacity I can still remove all of the opacity make it completely opaque and still have a kind of um, what do you say uh, a way to look through the object to see exactly what's behind it this is one of the most important features I really like in Illustrator compared to other graphic programs vector graphic programs because even though it's using all the blend modes and and opacity and all such options it's quite fast so try to uh, leverage these uh, uh, features in uh, illustrator and try to get it uh, to do whatever you want now another thing to note as you can see if I select this object the outline is actually here in the center this is the actual object itself this is the width and height of the object whereas my outline actually is going beyond and in the entire object let's say you do not want it you want the outline to be exactly inside or outside the object all such options can be found under stroke and here you know, as you can see there are a couple of options where you have this arrow marks on the side by clicking on this you can expand or collapse the entire tabs so this is the all the options which are available in the stroke panel now what I'll tell is I can align the stroke either inside or I can align it outside if I align it outside I don't really have control over the actual size of the object because the size does not reflect the actual size of the outline if I put it inside it reflects the actual size of the outline itself now uh, so now that you know that let me go ahead and tell you a couple of more options that you need to know uh, as you know I just changed transparency of the object a while ago and I showed you exactly how you can make the entire object transparent in Illustrator you don't have to make the entire object transparent you can actually go ahead and make only either the stroke or the fill transparent the way you can do that is in the appearance tab as you can see you have the fill and the stroke options available here and each one of them has opacity under it set to default I can go ahead and tell that the fill opacity I want the fill opacity to be let's say only 10% so now the fill is completely low okay it's too low it can't be seen so let me set it at 60% so as you can see the fill is very low and um, stroke is completely opaque I can go ahead and set the opacity of the entire object back from screen 
to normal so you can see exactly what's going on you can see that our stroke is completely opaque it is not at all changing whereas a fill is letting you see through the entire object itself so similarly I can do the same thing with the stroke so you can just do this so now the stroke is supposed to be transparent and okay so as you can see the stroke is now transparent and I can set the fill to be not transparent so the stroke is going in and out and where it's going inside it's transparent on the fill itself and it's going over the object too so when you're doing web graphics or any kind of logo development you can leverage these features to make sure it looks exactly the same way in any medium so that was basically the object how to create different objects using the shift and alt shortcuts and filling and outlines on the same object okay so now next let me go ahead and show you how exactly you can manipulate the shape of different objects uh, let us say that um, I wanted to create uh, a simple cutout of two spears in which I have this uh, blue spear which is exactly shown without this section which is being covered by this uh, cyan spear over here so to any kind of, any kind of these shape edit operations basically using cookie cutters all these options are available in the pathfinder so let's go ahead to the window tab over here and find the pathfinder and as you can see this is another panel which just opened up these can be docked by just simply dragging in anywhere and it creates this blue line leave it and it's docked as you can see these are only a few of the panels which are open currently and if you go to the window you can see a lot of options which are usually available so now let us say I want these two to be cut out I basically want this outer object which is on the top to cut out the one at the back so to do any cutting operations I can just select them and over here in the pathfinder I can just tell minus front basically what it does is take the front object and subtracts the back object so clicking it you can see it directly creates this cut now if I go back to my layers you can see that it created a new path and this section of it is completely gone right so similarly I can go ahead Okay, I uh, basically deleted it completely. So let me go ahead and create new objects. I'll fill it with the similar colors. Okay, now let's say instead that you wanted both of these objects combined. In such a case, I can use combine operation and it combines both of these objects together. Similarly, let's say I wanted them to intersect. Basically, give me only the exact portion where both of them overlapped. So that gives me intersection over here apart from that you have reverse intersect or uh, what is it called exclude if I click on this it gives me all the portion which is not being overlapped by both of these two objects so these are the different ways you can basically work with two objects there are other options here at the bottom which are basically variations of the same so the first option here basically creates intersection of both the objects uh, using both intersect and exclude so if I exclude so if I click divide you can see it created this okay it created a group here for me in the section so let me just show you the different groups I have different objects I have in the group I basically have these three objects now so all these three objects created in one single stroke so that was divine and then I have trim which basically does the same operation as this minus front right now because it is basically sitting on the front so what this did is subtract the front from the back so if you have several objects sitting on top of each other and you have something which is being cut off uh, in the view and you don't know what exactly is happening in the background and you don't care this is the option you have to go for I am planning to create a simple video on textile designing because I have been wo I had worked into textile design a couple of uh, months ago uh, so I I uh, think this option will be quite useful for people who are coming in from that field so I'll just go ahead and create a video on that later on now that was trim now apart from that I have this merge option which when I click okay this basically does not show you what happened let me go ahead and create another object so now if I select all of these objects and click merge you can see all of them go into a single group but now this last object which was being overlapped is basically cookie cut so this is a merge option it works exactly like trim but it creates a single object and groups it all for me in one shot okay apart from that I have intersect or crop I click on it and the last object I had selected 
is the one which is going to be kept and it's going to basically going to create a clipping mask for me so that is there and this is the outline section if I click on this all the outlines get separated out so I can go ahead and okay uh, you can see that from that time I've been going ahead and clicking all these objects within the group I'm not able to select the group itself over here this group can easily be ungrouped by going to object ungroup control shift G is a simple shortcut if I do ungroup I can go ahead and select different objects individually and as you can see using this outline option basically split out each and every single outline I have with those objects which are intersecting quite a useful feature now apart from that I have the last option which is minus back which basically goes ahead does exactly what this minus front does but in reverse so whatever is in the back goes and subtracts the front so if you have two objects which are in reverse order and you want to use this minus front option but you want, don't want to reorder them this is the option you had to go for so that was a pathfinder and those were the different options that pathfinder gives you let me just show you a couple of options which are related to grouping now I have three different objects which I've just created and I want them all grouped into a single object let's say it's a screwdriver or it's a person's head or anything that you have designed I can just use control G and it groups them all into a single object now let's say I wanted to duplicate this object I can go ahead use alt on my keyboard and as you can see when I press alt the arrow changes I now have a black arrow and a white arrow I can go ahead duplicate this several times so I have several groups now let me say I wanted to edit this particular group and I wanted to edit one particular object within that group I can obviously go to the layers I can open up the group I can select one object within the group as you can see clicking on any one of these circles selects a single object if I click over here it tries to select the entire group whereas here it selects the individual I can select it and let's say I wanted to change the color I can do that but it kind of is laborious to go into the layers and try to do all that every single time so instead what I can do is select any group and just double click on it so I've selected it I'll double click and as soon as I do that you can see rest of all the objects in the entire layer have become ha are completely transparent now only this layer is opaque and as you can see I can actually select each object individually this time so basically what I'm doing is gone into an isolation mode so here as you can see in the top in the layer I'm within the group so basically I'm editing objects within the group I can go ahead and do anything I want with these objects and now once I've done these edits I can tell I want to come back and now I have back and the entire group is edited I didn't have to go select different things or do none of those things I can just go double click on an object select do what I want come back right so that was isolating and grouping objects now uh, apart from this let's go ahead and talk about uh, clipping masks I'll delete all these objects Okay, let's say I have this object, this particular spear, and I have another square, this rectangle. Now, what I want to do is, I basically want this spear to be seen only in places where this uh, rectangle exists. I don't want the spear to be seen anywhere else. Basically, I want this rectangle to clip out everything about the spear. So, I can select the spear and the rectangle, make sure the rectangle is in the front of everything. I can go to object and here at the bottom I have clipping mask I can go just click make and as soon as I do that what you can see is this uh, rectangle exists and the spear is put inside the rectangle and it's being clipped out and as you can see in the layers it tells me I have a clip group and you can see clipping path exists which is basically my actual rectangle and my path exists which is basically my actual path which I had now let us say I want to add an additional object into this clipping mask I can go ahead create any object I want and I can directly drag it and put it below the clipping mask and as you can see it's being clipped too so it's easy ways of uh, clipping different objects or attributes just using this uh, option but uh, uh, exactly how might you be able to use this let's say for example you are doing any kind of um, you have some images in your scene like you're doing a magazine layout you want our entire image to be clipped out exactly to the bounds you can use clipping masks and put the image inside the rectangle or the page layout so that's the easiest way of using it now similarly 
let's look at uh, one last very important thing uh, when you're trying to edit objects and the look of objects and that is adding effects so if you have an object you can add different effects to it in illustrator unlike coral draw or um, other packages the effects which you apply in illustrator I really love them for the speed and uh, uh, even though you have applied a lot of effects on the uh, single object uh, illustrator usually does not crash it does crash but usually does not so I really love the effects so there are a couple of main effects which I want to show well first one is the blur effect which I'm going to make use of a lot when I'm going to show you other techniques so the main use uh, main one I'm going to use is the Gaussian blur this is the default blur which you usually use in Photoshop so you can set any value you can hit preview and you can see the uh, vector object is actually getting blurred so this is an actual vector object which is blurred and uh, I'm not sure about you but that just is amazing if you can think about it I can go ahead and actually edit the shape of this object and this actually completely updates the blur and it still exists so you can see it's an interactive effect if you want to go ahead and edit the effect once more you can go to the appearance tab and you can see the Gaussian blur exists inside this as an effects I can click on this I can re-edit the effect and close it off and the effect is updated so similarly you can go ahead and keep changing options also you can see that it has eye options just like um, you can have visibility options just like you have in layers you can turn it on and off quite easily uh, make sure the object is selected when you do it you can turn on and off the options quite easily not only this uh, in the appearance tab you can go ahead and add anything you want additionally like let's say you wanted an additional layer of fill you can add another layer of fill so it's quite easy to do all this so let's go ahead and close that out so that was the blurring effect I'll just show you two more effects uh, quite uh, the ones which I use most of the times uh, which is drop shadow we always tend to use drop shadow a lot I guess okay so let me go ahead and increase the values for this uh, in uh, for Illustrator one thing you can do is in any scrum input box wherever you have you can use a scroll mouse to go ahead and change the values interactively or you can use a shift and scroll to change the values tenfolds so it's easier to see the effects and because I have a very large scene scale because it's in pixels it's a very high number uh, it's kind of slow it tends to get slow when obviously when you're trying to overload the system so try to just know exactly what values you need to give so so you can see as you can see I just added in this uh, drop shadow effect I can go ahead and just select the drop shadow and delete if I want next one last effect I want to show is warp you can see there are several warp effects available here I'll just go ahead and let's say I want to give the flag effect I can go hit preview to see exactly the kind of effect I'm going to get I can set the amount of value I want and once I like the actual value I'm done if I want to go ahead and actually edit the shape once more I can do that too I can edit the shape and as you can see the flag actually gets updated so it basically means this rectangle which is uh, skewed up is the one which is actually being weighed about so it's uh, quite a useful effect or uh, feature so uh, that was the warp flag so like this you have several effects you can go through them look at whatever you want exactly at that particular time and use them apart from this uh, if you go online and search for illustrator scripts there are several scripts that people have created which you can load in from using other script options over here and you can pretty much get any kind of effects you want basically inside there uh, another thing I want to show you right now is actions in Illustrator uh, where you can go ahead and create a custom set of options uh, so that you don't have to go ahead and keep redoing them so as you can see there are loads of uh, actions which are pre-done for you so these are already present these are the presets so if I have an object I can just put it in and let's say that I have this object option for opacity 60 selected so what does it do it goes to transparency and sets opacity to 60 just double clicking on okay just clicking on this and telling play basically sets my object to that percent opacity or I can tell I want it to be opacity 40 with screen I can hit play and immediately you can see the opacity of the object is set to 40 and it has a blend mode of screen so similarly I can go to any one of these and use the same uh, settings so let's say for example I wanted to reflect it horizontally so play it's immediately reflected horizontally so it's harder to see with this let me go ahead and rotate this object 
and play as you can see it's reflected horizontally just flipped so like that you can go ahead and even record your own uh, settings so let's say I wanted to record one in which I wanted to remove all the stroke options and all the opacity and all other options in this um, entire section so for this I can go ahead and tell opacity I want it zero that means 100% opacity I don't want any transparency I can go to stroke and tell I don't want any stroke and for the fill I'll tell I want it to be black right so I've done that and I'll just tell stop so now I have recorded this entire thing so what exactly does it do okay I basically overwrit the reflect horizontal one I should have created a new action it does not matter because I'm anyway not going to use it anymore so let me let me just see what happens first a reflection is set and then it's going to go ahead go to the transparency set it to 100% opacity It's going to set the our stroke color It's going to go to appearance and remove the stroke item It's going to go set uh, fill color and in the swatches it's going to go apply a black swatch right so all these options are supposed to be applied so let me go ahead select a uh, star so this one I'm just going to set it uh, a different angle I'm going to apply a particular color I'm going to go set it to a yellow stroke of let's say 20 pixels and I'm going to give it an opacity of 30 so I've done all these options now if I go to reflect horizontal and play this you can see it reflected it went up it did all of my options obviously the stroke was not applied okay it uh, basically didn't go there so you can just go ahead see exactly what's happening and try to edit the whole thing it basically automates a lot of things and helps you out so that was actions now at last I come to one of the most important tools in Illustrator which is the pen tool most of the people are actually scared of using this tool uh, I'm not exactly sure why because it basically gives you every single thing you need to have in a particular node so let me go ahead and show you this this pen tool uh, basically works by giving you loads of options so let me just show you a few you can go ahead and click 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 and create any polygon shape you want uh, directly and any options you had already set on the object are what is going to be applied on this object when you're creating them so if you want to set any different options you can go ahead and set that too now what I basically want to do is uh, go ahead, let's say I want to uh, create a mango so uh, I want to do a stylized mango design so I'm going to go ahead just click and go ahead and start designing this so as you can see it's not going uh, um, okay basically whatever I have in my mind it's not going according to plan okay let's say I have this as you can see it's not exactly true uh, true to uh, whatever image or whatever I had in my mind so I want to go ahead and edit this shape you can't directly use the pen tool itself to edit the shape for this you need the selection or the direct selection tool it goes ahead and helps you select the nodes themselves so I can go ahead select the nodes move them about change the shape change a couple of the curve attributes and try to get a pleasing shape uh, kind of uh, shape which I actually like so as you can see I'm trying to reform the shape it's uh, turning out to be a bit better it looks a bit more aesthetic okay uh, let's say I just want it to be such and I'm not going to edit it anymore so I created this shape as you can see it took me a couple of steps it was not as quick as, as it was supposed to be so in such a case what I can actually do is make use of a couple of shortcuts within uh, Illustrator so I'm going to show you one of those shortcuts no. so if you have two tools selected like let's say I'm going to click the type tool and then I'm going to go ahead and click on the pencil tool if I press control on my keyboard you can see I immediately shift over to the previous tool okay let me tell direct selection tool instead and uh, the star tool so now when I'm in the star tool you can see here at the bottom it shows me what exact tool I'm working with if it's not you can go click on the arrow show and tell current tool by clicking the control arrow you can see it goes back to direct selection tool so even though I'm in the uh, particular tool by just using control I go back to selection tool so I'm going to make use of this option so using the pen tool I can go ahead start drawing something so let me go ahead I'll just click and drag by using shift I can constrain the angles so I'm just going to constrain it uh, horizontally 
and then I can click and drag and now let's say I didn't like the way it came I can go ahead to this point and try to re-edit the shape using the pen tool itself but I can't really move the point using the pen tool so in such a case I can use this option of control clicking and moving the point where I want or if I want I can even change the shape itself and now I can go ahead click and drag the next point and as you can see it's not correct again so I can go change the options try to get it better it becomes quite easy uh, once or twice you work with it okay so after all of this the only ob uh, edit I have is supposed to be this so uh, basically this is a textile mango I'm not trying to replicate any actual mangoes which you might have seen so you can see I can easily get any kind of shape I really want so that was one so let me just go ahead randomly create shapes and show you a few more options so let's say I have this shape and now I wanted to remove one particular node by being in the pen tool itself if I come to any point you can see that the tool changes it has a minus sign below it now by clicking on any node it deletes the node it's quite easy if I go to the path any position in the path where there is no actual node itself you can see it gives me a plus sign now I can go click and it gives me an actual node now if I want I can go click and let go and it has me there apart from this if I use my alt key it gives me a separate tool and this is called the convert point tool you can go to the uh, pen tool menu and you can see it has a convert anchor point tool it has a add anchor point tool and the delete anchor point tool add anchor point tool is basically your pen tool when you are anywhere on the path and delete anchor point tool is when you're on top of a node with your pen tool itself convert anchor point tool goes ahead and converts the anchor point from a point or you can go ahead click and drag and convert it to a cusp or a smooth uh, anchor point so that's the basic apart from that most of the other options here are quite self-explanatory I'm just going to show you one last thing here which is if you have used the pen tool which is the pen tool and let's say you only wanted the stroke not the actual fill I'll go ahead to the fill remove that I will go to the stroke and apply a stroke to this now let's say you wanted a stylized stroke you wanted different widths or different outline settings for such you have a special tool here called the width tool and using this you can go ahead pull out and create different widths at different locations but remember that while creating this it's better to have different anchor points so that you can get exactly the kind of results that you are looking for so you can see just by using one single width I can change the stroke value uh, stroke width value and create different effects too so that was creating that now uh, I've shown you exactly how to create objects using different constraints I've shown you how to use fill and stroke I've shown you how to use opacity I've shown you how to use effects I've shown you how to use layers groups how to isolate objects now let me go ahead and actually show you the real boring but the most interesting part of the whole thing uh, most important part of the whole thing actually which is the unit setup and how you had to set up your document before you actually start the whole thing so if you're going to actually start uh, creating a document in Illustrator first thing is going to ask you is what is the exact size and what do you want to call it so if you already have a name for your project go ahead call it that if you know that your project is uh, based on particular uh, settings like let's say it's for print uh, like for a magazine or something as such you can go ahead set it to let's say a4 size which is the default print format here in India so you can set that and all the basic settings are there for you let's say instead of points you wanted inches for your entire uh, settings so you, as soon as you set that you can see all the options are set for you if you're in print medium obviously you are going to set in some bleed amounts so that when the paper is cut you don't lose any details apart from this you also have some color settings It's going to tell you exactly how you're going to work because this is supposed to be print medium you can see it's automatically set to CMYK color mode if I want to let's say work with web you can see it sets to RGB color mode 
and because most of the uh, screen resolution for monitors is 72 uh, dpi or 72 pixels uh, the display units it's automatically set to that too and you can see units is also pixels so depending on what you're going to work on and what units you're supposed to use make sure you set it up exactly the way you want over here let's say you have not set it exactly the way you wanted it you have already created the document and now you really want to set it up when you have when you're in the normal select tool and you have not selected any objects here at the top you have document setup click on this and it brings out a similar window where you can set up the bleed amount and the actual units you're going to use instead let's say you want to actually edit the canvas itself which you created that is called an artboard you can go ahead and click edit artboard what this does is gives you the artboard tool now in illustrator what you have to understand is basically you're working with this two different artboards this outer one which you have the outer outline which you can see when I have zoomed out completely this is basically what you can call your desktop uh, this is like the top of your desk on which you're actually creating your artwork like your keeping pieces of paper and documents on top of this desk and actually working on top of it and your different papers on which you're working so you can go ahead put papers anywhere you want to here so this is actual uh, entire canvas you canvas region or the desktop you have and these are the art boards or these are the canvases you can create so now this creates a particular problem for most people because it um, messes up their rulers or it doesn't actually work with the rulers so let me just show you exactly how to work with them now if I go ahead and turn on my rulers which is basically going to views and rulers control R to get my rulers here you can see that it has some kind of a setup and you can see that the zero value and the zero value here are kind of here at this corner of this page if I go click on another page you can see this uh, value shift similarly if I go select the artboard you can see if uh, whichever artboard I go to it also has some kind of X and Y values to them so there are completely different rulers being used for each artboard now when I select each canvas the rulers which are being used are the local rulers for those canvases and these rulers are basically the topmost corner of each one of these canvas so if you really want to change the position of these you can just go to the corner here to the corner of the rulers click and drag and look at just pay attention to the top and the side of the rulers here and here at the top when I let go you can see the zero points have shifted now wherever I keep this this is where the zero points are but it does not change that for any other canvases so if I come to a different canvas the zero position is still exactly here at the corner this is because each canvas has its own local set of rulers so what exactly do you have to do if you want a global ruler or a what exact rulers or units are these canvases using themselves to get that ruler you can just click on the rulers here and change to global and this is actual ruler being used throughout and you can see it is actually set to this corner here now if you set it somewhere else this is going to be your global ruler settings and changing it back to artboard rulers gives you back the local rulers okay so that's enough about rulers if you uh, need it I know if you just go through the video you would have understood it if you did not understand it don't worry about it you don't have to care about it okay so that was the rulers for global and local next let's see grids or how to use guides when you're working with any kind of uh, uh, tracing or any kind of uh, precise documentation or precise uh, illustrations you obviously have to use guides so guides are basically these um, helping lines now which you can create on which you can snap and create objects using them and to create these guides all you have to do is go on top of one of the rulers and click and drag these guides out so by going to the uh, vertical ruler you can actually get the vertical guide and by going to the horizontal ruler you get the horizontal guide and uh, by just bringing in the ruler uh, the guide from one of the horizontal menus if you want to shift them to the vertical ruler just press alt and it shifts to the vertical uh, ruler uh, vertical guide so basically just using sh alt uh, changes the guideline orientation so that is it uh, next apart from this um, you can change the guides uh, change the grids grid line setup so uh, basically when you're working with any kind of let's say architectural plans uh, you don't have to do all kinds of architectural plans only in AutoCAD you can actually do that in Illustrator too
it has all the options you need so you can go to view and tell you want to actually show the grid by clicking on this you can see it shows you this grid which is basically going through a particular set of pixels and giving you this value the reason we use grids is let's say for example I want to use a pen tool I can go ahead and tell snap to grid and now my pen is always going to keep snapping to the grid and it gets me um, uh, on the way to create quite geometric designs and drawings so it's going to be quite accurate so uh, how exactly do you set this grid up to edit them you can go to edit preferences and here you have guides and grid here you can change the colors for your guidelines and the grid lines but the most important thing you have to look for is this grid lines every how many pixels so right now it's telling I want grid lines every hundred pixels and I want two subdivisions meaning I want one single grid between them so let me remove subdivisions for a second and set it to hundred and click OK so you can see this is hundred pixel grid lines if I zoom in you can see this grid line position is somewhere at around um, uh, 18 and this is at around 118 so I exactly want it to start from zero so for that I'm going to go ahead and change this here to snap there and also I'm going to change my global rulers to start from here so as you can see as soon as I change my global rulers it is exactly set and my grid is also going exactly so that is done it's going exactly at 100 but because of my 72 ppi I'm not able to see that okay so that was a grid setup now if I'm going to go ahead and draw some objects in this grid you can see it exactly keeps snapping within the grid so it gives me quite precise measurements I'm going to be making use of this while creating the logo okay so pretty much those are the most important things I wanted to show you uh, within Illustrator I hope I covered everything if you have any doubts please put them in the comments or uh, I think I my website with the form section will pretty much be open by by the time you see this video so in such a case the form link will be available and you can go ahead and post in any doubts you have over there and most probably I'll create another video uh, which is going to uh, have all the things which I missed out in this one so let me go ahead and just summarize everything that I've done till now so first step when you're going to go ahead and create a new document go ahead and set your units properly make sure if you're working on the screen like for web design or logo design or things which are basically going to be displayed on a monitor or um, on screens or projected set it to RGB if it's for print medium go ahead set it to CMYK if you're unsure just go ahead and use a profile from inside here now once you have set that up you have your uh, rulers which you need to set up you can change the different uh, uh, measurements you want to set for the rulers by just right clicking on them uh, the select tool is the black arrow over here the direct selection tool is basically for changing shapes on objects the pen tool is what you use to draw different shapes uh, so when you're using the pen tool uh, clicking and dragging creates smooth curves uh, just clicking creates sharper curves so just using the pen tool you can use a lot of options now because I use the direct selection tool before using the pen tool holding uh, control on my keyboard gives me options to uh, go ahead and change the shape on the fly while using the pen tool itself the pen tool while using it if I go on any node I get to remove the node and if I go on any parts I can go ahead and add an actual node on top of them now apart from that I have convert anchor point tool which is basically using my alt key on the keyboard while I'm on uh, uh, when I'm in the editing mode and because my grid snapping is set up I can't really use a lot of these options so okay apart from that while you're creating a new object like a spear when you click and drag you basically can use the shift key to make sure you're constrained to getting perfect spears sorry perfect circles or squares or perfect stars you can use alt key to make sure your center is going to be exactly where you click in the first point and apart from that if you use both of them together control and shift you can click and drag to get a perfect circle starting from the exact center where you started from uh, you have a pencil tool where you can use to just click and drag however you want if you have a Wacom tablet and such you can go ahead and use this uh, you also have a brush tool which can uh, which can use if you're going to use uh, let's say something like a Wacom tablet you can use pressure sensitivity to get different uh, um, shapes and sizes and all such you can go ahead use the eraser tool too let me go ahead apply a color on this object 
okay now when I just apply the color on the object the stroke was active so that's why I used X on the keyboard to switch it to a uh, fill and give a different uh, value I can go ahead use the eraser and just erase through an object as you can see it's quite easy to get this kind of details done apart from that I have the brush option I can go ahead create any kind of strokes uh, you can go ahead and add in any kind of values you want if you want to test out the different options you have you can change the layout from uh, the default one which you have to painting uh, sorry painting and this painting layout gives you all the options over here you can go ahead add in a couple of more uh, brush libraries uh, you can see there are loads of those libraries and use them to get different details so that's the brush yeah default line segment tools and our conspiral tools the default stuff which you usually have uh, also another tool which I think I've not mentioned of till now is a rotate and scale tool quite useful ones uh, the select tool by default lets you select shapes and you can rotate the shape and you can actually scale them quite easily but it does not have all the options which you would actually require from a default um, transform tool so if you want to actually have all the options just go ahead take the rotate tool and now you can click anywhere in the scene and actually rotate your objects so uh, let me go ahead and change the document values I'll just ch tell simulate colored papers so it's going to give me okay it's not giving me the value which I'm looking for okay anyway I'm just going to put it out and using the rotate you can see I can easily rotate this object however I want now let's say I wanted to rotate it from this particular corner here I can use my um, you can see that there is a cyan center mark here that is a pivot point I can put that anywhere I want by using my snapping as you can see I'm getting this uh, path and when I go to the anchor I get this anchor snapping points that is because of the smart guides so I have that on and I have smart snap to points on so because of both of them I'm able to snap it to different sections so now that I have snapped it here by using the rotate tool if I rotate you can see that it rotates exactly from that point now uh, most people who are into uh, like precision drawings and such you want the entire object to be rotated not randomly as such but at an exact value for such things you can use shift value and as you can see when I'm rotating it's giving me the value 45 degrees 90 degrees 135 degrees so it's giving me 45 degree increments when I'm trying to rotate it but let's say you didn't want to just rotate it as such you wanted to duplicate it or uh, some other options in such a case just alt click and move the anchor point where you want and immediately you get rotation options you can turn on preview to see exactly where it goes and set what options you want here so let's say I set it to an uh, angle of 10 and I can go ahead just hit copy so it just copied this object 10 degrees uh, using that anchor point now if I want to repeat the same operation throughout all I have to do is duplicate the transform the shortcut for that is control D and if you want that you can just go to transform and here you can see transform again shortcut is control D click on that control D gives you all of these objects quite a neat looking design right so I can go ahead and I'll just go ahead set the outline to a particular color so I can easily see that right I'll just remove the grids so I can see this now uh, such designs are quite easy to come by uh, so you have done that apart from this most of you want precision transforms like I was telling so in such a case you can go to the window manager and turn on transform box dialog box and here you can get a lot of options so let me just go ahead and open this up completely by clicking on this you can see I have some more options here at the bottom if I select a new object now I get different transform options I have the X and Y positions for the object itself using this as a pivot point I can set the reference point to any single position I want on the object next I can tell what is the width and height of the object precise width and height same options are available here at the top but here now you have different angle controls you can tell what exact angle you want the object rotated at and then also you can shear the object you can tell how much you want the object properly sheared so such options which are not available here at the top apart from this you can go ahead and tell align to pixel grid this is quite useful when doing web design so when I'm doing the illustrator web design video I'm going to go ahead and talk about that uh, also if you're going to let's say uh, this object which I have if I'm going to scale it down 
you can see the stroke is still the same size uh, the stroke did not scale down or up so in such a situation you can tell scale strokes and effects you can turn that on over there and now if I scale it up you can see the stroke has actually increased in scale so if you're going to scale objects down or up this is the option you want to use if you want to maintain the size of your actual strokes so those are the main options I wanted to show okay yes yeah, so pretty much that does it I guess uh, I've covered pretty much all the things I wanted to in this entire video I was talking a little bit too fast I know the reason being that uh, I didn't want the video to extend too long and I want to cram in as much information as possible within this video so that people can get started using illustrator quite easily now if you have any kind of doubts or if you uh, have any kind of confusion you can just go put them in the comments and I'll try to help you out with those. Uh, if you want to know more about any particular tools or techniques, even put those in there and I'll try to help you out. Apart from that, okay, so this was um, Illustrator Crash Course by Anand on EOS Acro. I hope you found this video useful and goodbye.